Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella and recently I decided to upgrade to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I will be doing a full review on this, but for now I just wanna show you guys all of the customizations that I do on a new Mac in order to help me use it more efficiently, whether that's for my comp sci schoolwork or for video editing. But most of these will help with basically doing anything on your computer. So if you're currently looking for ways to improve your Mac OS experience, then feel free to follow along. And just as an FYI, I am currently on macOS Monterey, but most of these customizations and tips will apply to older versions of macOS as well. And let's get on with the video. All right, so the very first app that I download is Rectangle. I seriously cannot do anything without this app. It's a free and open source app, and it's the best app that I found for managing my windows. So in Rectangle, you can define keyboard shortcuts to snap a window to any of these sizes. I most often just use the basic left and right snap, but there is this three-way split configuration, which I use quite often when I'm working with my larger monitor. I also have a shortcut to maximize a window, and I just think maximizing works a lot better than full screening, especially for some apps like Chrome, where in full screen mode, the menu bar actually shifts everything down. The window snapping keyboard shortcuts also no longer work in full screen, so that's another reason why I I prefer maximizing instead of full screening. I know there is a split view feature that's built into macOS. However, I think rectangle is better and also a lot more. For one, the keyboard shortcuts in rectangle are a lot faster than having to hover over the little green circle. It's also a lot more flexible with switching between apps. And of course, in rectangle, you can snap to a variety of sizes, not just the left and right. So yeah, if you find yourself often with a bunch of windows scattered everywhere on top of each other, then I definitely recommend checking out Rectangle. I think it will definitely make your life easier. All right, and another app that may be useful is called Top Notch. So if you have the new MacBook with the notch in the middle, then this app just turns the entire top part of your wallpaper black, which hides the notch really well. So right now I do have Top Notch turned on and I seriously cannot see the notch at all it just looks like I have a thicker bezel, but actually the menu bar is sitting on top of the black bar. So you're still taking advantage of the extra screen space. And I also installed iStats menu, which allows me to monitor the CPU and GPU usage. And this just helps me determine the cause whenever the computer is slowing down. This app also has a nice graph that shows you the battery usage, and it gives you a prediction on how long you have left on battery. So even if you're not super into the CPU and GPU stats. Um, I do think this battery life prediction and the usage graph is cool and could be useful for many people. Okay, so next I downloaded some widget apps and the first one is Widgeter. So in this app, you can select many different kinds of widgets to display directly on your desktop. But unfortunately, most of the widget options like the ones for weather, calendar, clock, etc., they all require a premium subscription. However, there are two free ones that I really like. So one of them is a music player for Spotify, or you can set it to Apple Music, but I use Spotify. After I start a song in Spotify, then I can actually use this widget to play or pause the song as well as skip to the next track. So yeah, a pretty handy widget and I think it looks really nice on the desktop as well. The second widget that I found shows me the storage information on my Mac and this just helps me monitor my internal storage usage so that I can make sure I can import my video files onto this computer for editing. And the second widget app that I downloaded is Pixel Widget. It mainly offers more decorative widgets that show you the date, the time, and my favorite one, which is the year in progress. As you can see, we are 84% done with 2021. I can also customize the colors and the fonts of these widgets. These widgets can only be placed in the notification center and not the desktop, but I think they still make for some pretty cute decorations. But anyways, so in my notification center, first I have the pixel widget and then I have a small calendar widget and this one is just the one from Apple. Underneath that, I have a weather widget and this one is 
is actually really good because it shows me super detailed information. This one is also from Apple. And lastly, I just have a screen time widget to monitor my screen time. Okay, so that's it for some of the first apps that I downloaded. And now I want to tell you guys about some super useful macOS tips that I think everyone could take advantage of. And the first one is regarding the display. So go into system preferences and then display. I think the default setting for the display is just way too big. So what I do is I put it to scaled and then more space. And this just allows me to see more things on my screen, which I find especially useful when I'm coding. Being able to see more lines of code at once is definitely a huge productivity boost. But also in general, more space allows me to see more text at once, which then helps me scan through documents, essays, Reddit posts, YouTube comments, everything faster. All right, and the second tip is for organization. So if you right click on your desktop, you can select use stacks and this will just group everything on your desktop by its type. As you can see, I have all of my folders neatly placed over here and all of my screenshots are grouped together as well. I love this feature and it's super useful for staying organized. And the next one is Spotlight Search. So you probably already know this one, but you may not have known that in addition to helping you find apps, you can also use Spotlight Search to find a specific folder or file if you know the name, and you can straight up use Spotlight Search to Google things too. So yeah, Spotlight Search is definitely a powerful tool. And the last one that I have is to use virtual desktops, and you can add them very easily by swiping up with three fingers and just clicking the add icon on the side. And to switch between your virtual desktops, just use three fingers to swipe left or right. I think virtual desktops are great if you're working on multiple different projects or for different classes at school. I like to have one desktop for my personal things as well as YouTube stuff and editing work, and then a separate desktop for all things school. And this just allows me to keep everything that I need open, but without creating any clutter. Now, there are actually some pretty useful features that are hidden in your system preferences. So first, under mission control, I set some hot corners. And probably the most useful one is the show desktop, which I put in the bottom right. So now whenever I hover my mouse in the right corner, it gives me a desktop. And from there, I can quickly grab things on the desktop and then return to whatever app or website I was in and send the thing that I grabbed in a text message or paste it in a document. It's super convenient. I use this all the time. And next I go into general and here I just change the accent and highlight color to whatever color I'm feeling. I also make sure to set the default web browser to Google Chrome. I know that Chrome uses more battery and RAM and is even slower than Safari, but being the most popular browser, it has the best extensions and I really like my Chrome extensions. And some of my favorites are Checker Plus for Google Calendar, which just lets me check my Google Calendar with one click, no matter which tab I'm currently in. I also really like Enhancer for YouTube, which just improves the overall experience of browsing through YouTube. One feature is that it gives you a small floating window when you're just scrolling through the comments. It also allows you to adjust the volume with your mouse scroll wheel, and you can even put a theme on YouTube just to make it look nicer. Okay, and next I go into desktop and screensaver to choose a wallpaper. And I actually really like the default wallpaper for Monterey. So that's what I have set as my wallpaper currently. And normally I don't bother choosing a screensaver, but this time I noticed this handwritten hello screensaver that I thought looked really cool. So I chose this as my screensaver. And lastly, in the dock and menu bar here, I adjust the dock size and I usually like it on the smaller side. I also like having some magnification too. I think the effect looks kind of cool and I like keeping it on the bottom. I think that's the best place where it won't conflict with any web apps like YouTube, for example, that may have things on the side. I also check the automatically hide and show dock option so that when I don't need the dock, it doesn't take up any extra screen space, but when I do need it, then of course it's there. And as for the menu bar, so I only like to have the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop, the new focus modes, and now playing in it. Normally I want the battery there too, and also to have it show the percentage, but this time I'm not going to put it there 
there because I already have all of my battery information with the iStats menu app. And for everything else, like the keyboard brightness, screen mirroring, display, I removed them from the menu bar, but they are still in the control center. So if I ever need them, then they're there. All right, and the last thing that I do is regarding Finder. So I go into Finder Preferences and I edit what shows up in the sidebar. So I remove all of the iCloud stuff because I don't use them. And then I add movies and also my home folder into the favorite section. All of my Final Cut Pro projects are stored in the movie section. So this just helps me be able to find things easier. All right, so those are all of the customizations that I do to set up a new Mac. If you have any macOS tips that I didn't mention in this video, then please leave them down below because I would love to know. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and also subscribe to my channel down below for more content like this. I do plan on making more videos about the MacBook Pro and I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!